What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because the ban list has just dropped. It starts on December 1st. This deck that I'm showing you, which is Yosenju, has always been one of my favorite decks of all time. One of my first decks that I played when I first got into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And the thing is with this deck, it can make use of the most broken cards that just came off of the ban list. It's one of those decks that I think can actually compete in today's metagame and I'm going to go a little bit more in depth in the deck profile and maybe convince you to play this deck because i think if you want to play yosenju this is the time to play it but if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on spanko deck profiles combo videos dual replays bandless reactions all that good stuff right here on the channel so you guys can make sure to subscribe to check it all out with that being said i don't want to take up too much of your time so let's get right into the deck profile all right, so just before I get into the video here, I do want to say that Konami giving us back these floodgates is absolutely insane. I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this. This is a sleeper deck in today's format. If you can build it now with the macro cosmos and the dimensional fissure, I'm telling you, this deck may be able to compete against today's metagame just because it's so good into pretty much everything. And this main deck has an answer for it all. So I'm going to explain a little bit deeper and maybe I can convince you with that, let's get right into it. We are starting off with three Yosenju comma one, three Yosenju comma two, three Yosenju comma three, as well as two Yosenju Sujik. Okay, so that's it for the lineup. This is a lineup that I always swear by. It's a lineup that I'm not going to change. And the reason for that essentially is because they're the best ones, especially for the metagame. You don't want to play any gimmicky ones or any ones that have really niche effects. These are just the best ones. Now, I do want to say they all have their all unique effect on top of the effect where they all get to normal summon themselves and then normal summon another one from your hand. The really cool thing about the commas is that they have effects that are really relevant so comma one lets you bounce a card your opponent controls back to the hand comma two attacks directly comma three searches when another yosenju does battle damage and then sujik can act as an honest in hand or on the field can target a yosenju monster you control boosts his attack by a thousand so these are the best ones i think that's all the explanation they need they're just the best yosenju ratios the best yosenju monsters then we're playing the cards essentially nine cards to be every single meta deck Yes, including tier elements because tier elements requires the graveyard, even Sprite, even Runic, all these kind of decks require the graveyard. But guess what? We're not letting our opponent get to the graveyard. We're playing three dimensional shifter, three dimensional fissure, as well as three macro cosmos. We're maxing out on these. The reason we're maxing out on these, of course, is because they are the anti-meta cards. They are the cards that essentially help destroy the format. But on top of that, they're just so consistent now that you're playing the nine of them. Yes, okay, shifter is a card that if you open other things or activate other cards first, shifter may be dead. You still have to be playing this. This card is really good going second as well. But fissure, and macro cosmo are so insanely broken and you have to be playing these at three because you can just activate your fissure to start your turn keep in mind all the yosenju monsters come back to your hand on the end phase so you're not going to really be worried about them going to the graveyard at any point so for that reason these cards are mainly only affecting your opponent it's insane the fact that we have these cards back at three with the most recent ban list but i do want to say another thing that i think might be a little bit overlooked with the new ban list is three fire formation tanky tanky just came back to three which is insane because if you guys haven't noticed all the yosenju monsters are beast warriors so that's what i mean by the consistency of this deck just got boosted like crazy because not only are you maxing out on some of the most broken floodgates in the game right now you're also getting three of one of your main searchers in the deck which is extremely powerful so of course three tanky is really nice on top of that it gives your monsters a 100 attack boost you're not going for otk a lot of the time however the 100 boost can be good especially if you're chipping for damage you're getting into a time situation a little bit more damage is nice especially with yosenju Central Comma 2 being able to attack directly, just that little boost can be really nice, right? But speaking of consistency, we're also playing three pot of extravagance as well as two pot of duality. Now I'm opting into extravagance in this deck rather than prosperity because you guys can see the most important cards in our deck are all three of. So prosperity is really good when you're digging into something or digging for something really specific, but because you're playing three of's of all the most important cards, you're always going to see some combination of them. So for that reason, I think a deck like this one can really benefit off of having more cards in its hand rather than picking a specific card.
card. That being said though, Prosperity is not a bad card. It's not one of those cards that I think you shouldn't be playing. I just think specifically Extravagance is better in Yosenju. But if you have Prosperity, if you guys want to play Prosperity, you can do that as well. But I just truly think Extravagance is just a little bit better. And another card that's also really good is Two Potted Duality. Of course, you're not special summoning in this deck at all. So for that reason, Duality is just another card that helps you get into your Floodgates. Extremely consistent deck here. Another thing I do want to mention just before I continue on with the deck is that Impermanence, Droplet, Veiler, those cards are not very prominent in today's format. And so for that reason, the Yosenju monsters, their effects are always going to go through where you normal summon one, activate the effect to normal summon again. And because of that, you're not worried about playing cards like Called by the Grave, which are a little bit slow in today's format. So that's the reason why I think this deck is just really powerful as well, is because all the cards that really used to affect this deck aren't really prevalent in the metagame. On top of that, with something like Veiler, you do have to send it to the graveyard, which means Fissure is going to stop it, right? So that's why I think this deck is very, very powerful. Now moving on to more graveyard hate, if you guys didn't think we played enough, we're playing two Necro Valley. Necro Valley is insanely powerful, of course, and there's a lot of ways to get into Necro Valley now, which is really nice, but we're also playing the one zone. Zombie world. I'm going to explain the zombie world in just a second, but to follow up with our field spells, we are playing the one terraforming as well as the two metaverse. I'm only playing two metaverse, I'm not playing three, and that's just because this deck is just so consistent on its own. The metaverse itself, if you're drawing them after you've already gotten access to your field spell, is just not as powerful. I think two is just the perfect ratio, especially because we have the one terraforming. So essentially, we're playing six field spells, which I think is just the best ratios, right? Now, I do want to mention zombie world. If you guys didn't notice, some of the most broken cards in the deck are the fissures, the shifters, and the macro cosmos. However, you know what I think is going to be one of the better decks in the format, if not the deck that is considered the best deck outside of tier limit, so I guess the second best deck in the format, it's going to be Fluandries. And none of these cards, there's nine cards right here that do nothing against Fluandries. So for that reason, I felt like we do need a main deck out for that deck. That deck is going to get really popular because most Fluandries decks are probably going to be on three Shifter and three Fissure as well. They may or may not be on Cosmos, but you know, they don't care about banishing the cards. They want their cards banished. So for that reason, a nice main deck out to that deck is the Zombie World, of course, and the Metaverse can always get you to the Zombie World, which is really really nice we have another main deck out that i'm going to talk about in just a second but one of the cards that's really good into the overall metagame is three rivalry of the warlords again keep in mind that the metagame consists of decks like tier limits you have fluandries running around and i think fluandries is going to be really good in this format you have runic sprite you have just the regular sprite combo variants dealing here and there pendulum is really powerful as well so for that reason rivalry of the warlords is just so powerful against all those decks that i just mentioned other than fluandries because it locks you into a single type of monster now fluandries is all winged beast so for that reason, this card's not that great against them. However, you are only playing Beast Warriors, so you can play under this as well. But the card that is really good against the Flawandries matchup is the Gozen match. Gozen match is so strong because it locks your opponent into a single attribute. You're playing only wins, so you're not worried about that. However, Gozen match locks your opponent into summoning their Robina, which is a fire. They can't get to their Eaglin. I'm pretty sure two cans of water. Can't remember all the attributes, but I know they're different attributes. So Gozen match is really powerful against that as well. So that's a really cool thing that I like about this main deck. If you guys are looking at it you have ways to beat the flundries matchup ways to beat the tier limit matchup ways to beat the sprite matchup right runic the dragon link the pendulum draco slayer all those matchups you have in deck main deck outs for which is insane not to mention the side deck is going to specialize versus certain matchups but the main deck here just covers everything which is really really powerful moving on to the extra deck here we are playing two garura two mud dragon two starving venom these are just super poly targets they're really powerful going second especially against the flunderies matchup as well if they're not setting up barrier statue which a lot of the time they may not set up barrier statue against you because you're not special summoning monsters anyways. You're not really worried about the barrier statue. They may not set it up against you. And if they don't set it up against you, you can always super poly into Garura, which is really, really powerful. You have the two Mud Dragon and then two Starving Venom, like I said earlier, for the tier limit matchup, sprite matchup, whatever matchups these are good into. And then you're playing the two Lightning Chidori. Lightning Chidori is a win, which is nice. You can play it under Goza Match. It can target a set card your opponent controls, shuffles it back into the deck, which is nice. You're playing the two Cowboy. Cowboy is really powerful as well, especially when you're going to time, when it's getting into to the mid to late game you can go into cowboy just to hit for a little bit more damage especially like i said earlier this deck does a lot of poke damage you're not otking but you are doing a lot of chip damage right sometimes you'll bring your opponent down to like 700 life points 600 life points and then you make a good cowboy and then you can win with this right another really good rank for this format is baguska again another card that you can make against the fluandries matchup so that you can have a really good time against them so that's why baguska is really nice you have main decks out to fluandries you have the baguska which is in the extra deck which is really nice two dweller you're not really making dweller that often 
often just because you have so much graveyard hate already but dweller is a very powerful card in today's format then lastly we're playing the one zeus where if you make any single one of these and they happen to attack and they happen to survive you make zeus here instead so this extra deck i think is very very powerful i think this is all you're gonna need you're barely ever gonna go into it the thing you're gonna go into the most honestly is probably cowboy or baguska and then these cards if you're going second with super poly right speaking of going second with super poly let me show you guys a quick side deck don't get me wrong this side deck that i'm showing you guys doesn't have to be the side deck that you play keep in mind you want to build your side deck based off of your locals so if your locals likes a certain type of deck you're gonna want to build your side deck to beat that kind of deck right this is just a generic side deck that i put together really quick that i think just makes sense and you'll send you so here we're playing three lava golem of course for going second helps you break boards if you activate d fissure and then go lava golem on your opponent that's insanely powerful you're pretty much breaking their board and it's getting banished which is really nice keep in mind that your comma one can also bounce your lava golem if you need to yes your lava golem is going to make it so that you can't normal summon which is fine though because you're putting your opponent on a time limit which is really nice especially paired with the floodgates is very very powerful two more zombie world for the flu matchup you side out the necro valleys you can side in more of zombie worlds same thing with imperial iron walls iron walls the opposite of all of these cards this one makes it so that your cards can't be banished but that's obviously really good in the Flunderies matchup as well so you're playing the imperial iron walls we're playing the three super polymerization the three regeki regeki super poly these are nice board breaker cards in today's format if you activate regeki when you have the fissure up this is just so it's so nasty bro it's such a nasty combo and then you have harpy's feather duster as our 15th card so keep in mind you don't have to build this side deck the exact way that you guys see it here however i do think this is a pretty powerful side deck you guys can play stuff like lightning storm as well if you're worried about going second but i just think this deck is so good man i'm gonna be honest with you i think this deck it's it's time to shine if you guys are gonna play you send you this is the time you want to play the deck so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That was your Senju for December 1st, the brand new format post ban list. I think this deck is insanely powerful. You have some of the most broken anti-meta cards against pretty much every single meta deck and every single relevant deck in today's format, which is absolutely insane. This deck I think can perform really, really well in today's format. And if you guys did enjoy the video though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on Spanko, deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, all that good stuff. You'll find it right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe. Now this format, this is going to be a different one. Tier is still definitely the best deck. However, there's going to be some rogue decks, especially with Fissure and Cosmos and Tankies back at three. There's going to be some rogue decks popping up. So I hope you guys enjoyed it with that. Spanko signing out. Peace.